Welcome to Module 4.2. Today we're covering action potentials and synapses. This is in your textbook in Chapter 35.1 and 35.2. The main focus of this lecture is how a neuron takes an electrical signal from one end of the neuron down the axon and all the way to a synapse. Before we start talking about how an electrical impulse travels down a nerve axon, we have to first set up the scenario that we're talking about. And the area we're going to be focusing on in the neuron is the plasma membrane. If you remember from the last video, we have a special ATP-driven pump called the sodium-potassium pump that takes sodium from inside the cell and pumps it against its concentration gradient to outside the cell and it takes potassium from outside the cell and pumps it against its concentration gradient to inside the cell. So it's important to remember that outside the cell we have 145 millimolar concentration of sodium and inside we have about 5 and the opposite is true for potassium. So we have much more potassium inside the cell than we do outside and much more sodium inside the cell outside the cell than we do inside. The other important membrane proteins that we're going to be discussing in this lecture are ion channels. These are proteins with a highly selective hydrophilic pore in the middle that let ions through the membrane. Remember ions are very small and have a charge so they are not going to be able to pass through our membrane because they're so um, hydrophilic that they won't pass through this hydrophobic core of our lipid bilayer. So to get an ion through the membrane we need an ion channel. When an ion channel opens up, it allows ions to flow freely and rapidly through the channel from one side of the lipid bilayer to the other. Remember we said ion channels are selective, so a specific ion channel will only let one specific type of ion through. In this lecture we're going to be focusing on sodium ion channels and potassium ion channels. Now a sodium ion channel only allows sodium through, potassium ion channel only allows potassium through. This is a cross-sectional view of a pi, uh, potassium ion channel. You see at the top, so uh, potassium ions would be flowing down this way. At the top there's a selectivity filter and this is uh, carbonyl groups that are acting to only allow specifically uh, potassium ions through. So these ion channels are going to um, permit ions through based on two things. The first is the diameter and shape of the channel. So this this channel diameter and shape is specific to an ion and the second is the distribution of charged amino acids that line that channels, the channel and that's that selectivity filter. So based on the size and the amino acids on the uh, lining the inside of this ion channel, these ion channels are going to be very specific for specific ions. Again remember these have a huge transport rate whereas carriers are rather slow ion channels allow up to one million ions per second to flow through each channel and this is because the uh, protein doesn't need to bind to the molecule change conformation and release the molecule it simply opens and allows the ions to pass through down their electrochemical gradients the next important bit of information about ion channels is that they are gated and by gated I mean that they can either be open or closed based on a couple different stimuli. Now these two types of stimuli are electrical signals and chemical signals. In the propagation of a nerve impulse, the ion channels are opened by an electrical signal. So here we have a diagram of a voltage-gated sodium channel. So this is an ion channel that only allows sodium ions through and it's opened and closed based on an electrical signal inside the cytoplasm. When the electrical signal causes the sodium ion channel to open, sodium ions are free to move down their electrochemical gradient into the cell. And this sodium ion channel is actually a bit special because it has a third conformation and that is inactivated. So you can see here this little 
ball and chain type looking deal has come up to block the flow of ions. And the way this sodium uh, voltage gated sodium channel works is it only goes from closed to open to inactivated. It can't go any other way and then inactivated will go back to closed. So it can't skip from open back to closed. It has to go to inactivated and then back to closed. So it has this kind of cycle that it goes through and that's going to be uh, important later when we talk about how a nerve impulse moves. So if we look at our cell we actually have a little bit of a difference of charge when we compare the outside of the cell which we call the extracellular fluid and the inside of the cell which is the cytoplasm. This difference in charge is called a membrane potential. So the way this membrane potential arises is Remember, the sodium-potassium pump has been pumping a lot of sodium outside the cell and a lot of potassium inside. But we have this special ion channel called a leaky potassium ion channel. This potassium ion channel is always open, and it allows sodium to go through. So you can see, based on a concentration gradient, you would think a lot of sodium would go through. However, when you lose a positively charged ion, you have a negative charge inside the cell. And then the outside of the cell is gaining a positive charge, so it has a positive charge. And after a while, the positive charge outside is going to oppose the flow of more potassium ions out, because a positive charge will repel a positive charge. So the potassium ions are going to be at equilibrium um, not flowing through this ion channel and because we've lost a few positively charged potassium ion channels from the inside of the cell we have a negative charge built up and because we have a positive charge out here no more potassium ion channels are going to flow through because this electrical membrane potential is pushing against the flow of sodium ions to the outside of the cell. So I've alluded to this a couple times already, but ion channels are essential for signaling in nerve cells. Nerve cells need to move a signal quite rapidly and sometimes over a long distance. For instance, in our body we have a nerve called the sciatic nerve that goes from our um, spinal cord here near our pelvis all the way down to the bottom of our foot and our toes. So if you're a tall person like me, this could be up to a meter in length and an axon of a nerve cell in the sciatic nerve is actually one single cell. So this is a very long axon and it needs to be able to move a signal from your toes to your vertebrae and uh, vice versa very rapidly. So that was, that's what neurons do. They receive, conduct, and transmit signals. And these signals are electrical signals and the signal is actually transmitted by a change in the electrical potential across the membrane. We call this a nerve impulse or an action potential. So a change in the electrical potential across the cell membrane is the signal. And for long distances, like down that sciatic nerve, we have large neurons that use an active signaling mechanism. And this is an electrical stimulus uh, that exceeds a certain threshold strength, which we'll talk about in a minute, and exceeding that threshold strength or threshold signal level causes an explosion of electrical activity that is going to rapidly propagate all the way down that nerve cell's axon through this, uh, along the cell membrane, and it's sustained by this automatic ampli amplification all the way down the axon. So this traveling wave, or this signal, or this nerve impulse, is what we call an action potential. And this actually can move quite quickly. Uh, we can carry a message without any attenuation at greater than 100 meters per second. So this movement of electrical signals down our membrane and down our nerve cell axon is largely based on our voltage-gated sodium channel. So again, remember, this guy goes from closed to open based on an electrical signal. If you recall, the inside of our cell has a slight negative charge. And when you have an impulse 
or an electrical signal or an, a nerve impulse or an action potential moving down the cell from left to right, you'll have an increase in the charge on the inside of the cell. That's going to cause the voltage gate in sodium ion channel to go from closed to open. And when that guy opens up, we're going to have a large influx of sodium ion from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell. And this is the mechanism that allows us to move uh, nerve impulse along the cell. Let's take a closer look at that here. So if we have a little electrical probe that we could put inside the cell, so we're measuring the uh, electrical charge here in millivolts inside the cell. Remember we have that resting membrane potential that is negative because we've lost some positively charged potassium ions through those leaky channels. And our three main players are the voltage-gated potassium channel, the voltage-gated sodium channel, and our sodium-potassium transport protein that uses a TP to move sodium out and potassium in. So we have this negative resting membrane charge. Then what happens is we have a increase in membrane charge on the inside. So we went down from down here around negative 70 up to closer to zero. So this is called depolarization. So remember, we said when our charge goes from a negative to a positive charge on the inside of this cell, our sodium ion channel is going to open. So there is an electrochemical gradient, which is a gradient of both um, charge and concentration, because we still have a pretty negative charge in here. It was negative 70, and it's, it's sweeping up, but it's still going to attract sodium in. So sodium is going to rush into the cell down its electrochemical gradient. It's going to cause the electrical um, charge inside the cell to become positive. This is called depolarization. And next we have at a peak action potential, we're here around 40 millivolts. That's going to cause our electrically gated potassium channel to open. Potassium, again, remember we had a lot of it inside the cell, so what we see is it starts flowing outside of the cell down its electrochemical gradient. Because now the inside of the cell is positively charged, so the potassium is going to want to move out down here to the negative charge outside, so it's going to follow its concentration and electrical gradients down outside of the cell and this is going to cause our electrical charge to go back down to negative because losing a positively charged ion will lower the charge inside the cell. And this process of depolarization and um, repolarization continues on down the cell and is what propagates our nerve impulse. So let's look at the at one kind of section, one section of this action potential. If we look at a diagram of time on the x-axis and membrane potential on the y, remember membrane potential is measured uh, on the inside of our uh, cell membrane, right, right in here. We start out at a resting potential around negative 70 millivolts. Remember that's because we have those leaky potassium channels that have let a little bit of positive charge out giving us a slightly negative charge inside the cell membrane. So we get a stimulus from either a sensory cell or upstream of the neuron that causes our target cell to depolarize towards the threshold potential. So depolarization is an increase in charge from negative 70 up to about negative 55 millivolts, and that's called the threshold of excitation. The threshold of excitation is where the sodium ion channels start to open. Remember, these are voltage-gated sodium ion channels, so when they see an increase from negative 70 to negative 55, they open. And when they open, they allow all those sodium ions that we've been pumping outside of the cell with our sodium potassium pump to rush into the cell. So as you have positively charged 
sodium ions rushing into the cell, we gain a positive charge. And that takes us all the way up here to around plus 30 millivolts, and that's at point 3, called the peak action potential. And at the peak action potential, again, we have a different voltage-gated ion channel open, and that's our potassium voltage-gated ion channel. So that guy's going to open up here at this peak action potential. And when you have that open up, you have potassium start to leave the cell. So to gain a charge, we had sodium rushing into the cell. And to lose our charge back down to negative, we have potassium rushing out of the cell because it's following its electrochemical gradient. So we're losing these positively charged potassiums. And as we lose those positively charged potassiums, we are repolarizing all the way down here down to a negative charge again. Uh, it actually goes a little bit below our resting potential. That's called hyperpolarization. So that's down here at uh, 4, where the membrane becomes hyperpolarized because we've lost potassium ions, and they continue to leave the cell. So the uh, hyperpolarized membrane is in a refractory period and cannot fire. Remember, the refractory period is when the sodium ion channels are in inactive states, and they can't be opened or closed. So here, um, next, we go up to our resting membrane potential again, and that's at number 5. The potassium ion channels are closed, and our sodium-potassium transporter is using ATP to restore that resting potential. Because remember, we, have, we let all our sodium inside and all our potassium outside. So this sodium-potassium pump has a lot of work to do, pumping sodium back out and potassium back in the cell to get us back to our resting potential. And this happens again and again as we travel down our neurons. So this is a self-amplifying depolarization that always depolarizes neighboring regions. And remember, depolarization is going from a negative charge up to a positive charge. So going from negative 70 to plus 30 millivolts. That's what we're talking about when we say depolarization. So. Depolarization, remember again, is because sodium ions are rushing into our cell. So we depolarize this region, and what happens when you have a bunch of sodium ions come into the cell is they start diffusing. They start diffusing this way, and they start diffusing this way. And when you have positively charged sodium ions diffusing, they cause a slight increase in charge, moving this negative 70 region up to our, th our threshold potential. Remember, that's moving from negative 70 to negative 55. That occurs because we had a downstream depolarization. So once we hit our threshold potential in this region, we depolarize again. Remember, it's going to open up our sodium ion channels uh, in this region of the cell, allow sodium to rush in, and increase our charge inside the cell. Again, the sodium starts to diffuse back and forth. And again, it triggers another depolarization. So you can see the depolarizations happen again and again and again in a chain reaction. And that's how action potential flows down the cell. So you might think, OK, sodium is diffusing in. It's diffusing both forwards and backwards. So why does the signal only travel one direction? And the answer to that is the inactivated state of our sodium ion channel. Remember, after being opened, it becomes inactivated. An inactivated uh, sodium ion channel cannot be opened or closed. It's simply immune to any sort of electrical charge. So if we look back here, you have a repolarizing section downstream, so the um, signal has already moved past this guy. It's repolarizing. The sodium ion channels here in this section are inactive. So even though they're seeing positively charged ions that are increasing the membrane potential a little bit, those ions will not start a depolarization, depolarization because they're running up against an inactivated sodium ion channel that will not open to them. However, the sodium ion channels this way down here 
uh, to the right where the signal is traveling look like this. They're closed. Remember, the closed uh, sodium ion channel can be opened by an increase in charge. So these guys get opened uh, and the depolarization continues while the ones while the sodium ion channels behind the flow of the signal are inactivated and it cannot be opened. So this occurs again and again and again. We have a depolarizing stimulus here that causes sodium to move in down to here which causes another depolarizing stimulus and these waves move down our axon causing the next bit of membrane to depolarize. And that's how we move a, an electrical signal down our cell. So what happens when we have our s signal that's gone all the way down our axon, all the way to the end of the cell? What happens when it hits the end of the cell? Well, that's called a synapse. And we have to get our signal from our neuron to our target cell, which could be another neuron or possibly a muscle cell. So a synapse is a small area between two cells where electricity cannot travel. Remember, we have an electrical signal coming down our axon, but it can't jump this space. This is called the synaptic cleft. and is the space between two cells. Our synaptic cleft is about 20 nanometers wide, so it's very, very small. But the electrical signal can't cross that. So we need to change our electrical signal into a chemical signal. And these chemical signals are called neurotransmitters, and they're stored in vesicles. Vesicles are, are membrane-bound sacs full of neurotransmitters. So these guys here are, are um, membrane brown vesicles that have a neurotransmitter inside them. They're sitting there and they're waiting. And what happens is we have uh, a charge coming down. Remember the sodium voltage gated sodium channels are relaying that charge and when it gets to the end of the neuron we have voltage gated calcium channels. These work the same way as the voltage gated potassium channels in that an increase in voltage will cause them to open. And when a voltage gated calcium channel opens, calcium flows from outside the cell to inside the cell. And that calcium is actually a signal that causes these neurotransmitter containing vesicles to move to the edge of the cell and release neurotransmitters via exocytosis. So the electrical signal again causes electrically gated calcium ion channels to allow calcium in. Calcium tells the um, neurotransmitter containing vesicles to release the neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft and the neurotransmitter is going to move across the synaptic cleft to our postsynaptic neuron. So this neurotransmitter is going to move across our synapse and it's going to bind to a different kind of ion channel. Up till now, the ion channels we've been talking about have been opened and closed based on electrical signals. However, these ion channels are ligand-gated ion channels. They are opened or closed based on a chemical signal. And in this case, that chemical signal is our neurotransmitter. So the neurotransmitter is diffusing across this synapse. It's going to bind to a, uh, a ion channel. And when the neurotransmitter binds to the ion channel, it opens that ion channel. And when that ion channel opens, we're going to have positively charged ions start to flow into the cell, causing our once negative inside of the cell to be slightly positive. And remember, that's a depolarization. So we're going to start another signaling cascade because we've depolarized our membrane. That depolarization is going to start moving down the postsynaptic neuron cell. And now we have a new electrical signal in our postsynaptic neuron. And after that ligand has allowed the um, depolarization of the membrane, it's going to uh, unbind from our um, ligand gated ion channel or dissociate. That ion channel is going to close and the um, 
neurotransmitter is going to be reuptaked, or it's going to go uh, undergo reuptake, and going to go back into our presynaptic cell so that that synapse is cleared of neurotransmitters and is ready for the next signal. So we have thousands of synapses that form on each cell body and dendrites of a neuron or a motor neuron and there are stimulatory and inhibitory signals for each of these neurons and this is the way in this huge network of neurons and synapses uh, this is what allows us to think to learn to act and to remember so this is the electrical and chemical basis for all thought and movement in your body and on that note I'd like to thank you all for watching have a nice day.